Welcome back. At this point, uh, we need to know the difference between the conscience and, and the Holy Spirit. And a good way to tell the difference many times between the conscience and the Holy Spirit is that the Spirit of God will never contradict the Word of God. And over time, the Spirit of God will also renew and reshape our conscience as we wash it in the Word of God. This is why sometimes people are torn in a decision because God's Spirit is pulling one way and our conscience is pulling in the other way. Another way that you can tell the difference between the Holy Spirit and the conscience is that the conscience can become polluted. But see, the Holy Spirit can never be polluted. The conscience also desires comfort. But the human con conscience is drawn to fleshly desires and comforts. James, the first chapter, verse 14 from the NLT tells us, that temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and drag us away. And then thirdly, the conscience accepts its secondary influence when, it, when it's in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Romans the ninth chapter, verse one from the NLT, Paul says that I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit. The conscience of the believer acknowledges the power and the superiority of the Holy Spirit at its arrival following salvation. And then lastly, the Holy Spirit calls attention to sins of our fleshly conscience. And the direction of our Holy Spirit then always leads us to Christ, always. So as we look at some scriptures on the conscience, when we talk about a clear conscience, we look at Job from the 27th chapter and verse six, where Job says, I will maintain my innocence with wavering. My conscience is clear for as long as I live. See, only God's forgiveness and the determination to live right before God can bring a clear conscience. And then how do you keep a clear conscience? If we look at 1 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 19, Paul tells Timothy to cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. See, for some, for some people have deliberately violated their consciences, and as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. So how can you keep your conscience clear? Treasure your faith in Christ more than anything else and do what you know is right. And then don't ignore your conscience. From Matthew, the 27th chapter, verse 19, Pilate's conscience told him that Jesus was innocent, but he was afraid of the crowd. So we should also follow your conscience when the scriptures are silent. Romans 14, 23 tells us that we try to steer clear of actions that are forbidden by scripture, of course, but sometimes scripture is silent. Then we should follow our conscience, especially if we're following the dictates of God's word and God's ways. Then I'd like to also talk about the seared conscience. Because in my opinion, in these last days, it is of the utmost importance. In other words, it's, it's as if it is a sign of the times. So what is a seared conscience? First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses one and two from the King James Version tells us, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing or deceiving spirits and doctrines of evil, of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with, an iron, with a hot iron. From the NLT, it tells us that now the Holy Spirit tells clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from true faith, 
They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. And these people are hypocrites and liars and their consciences are dead. So as we talk about uh, these, the conscience being seared, the conscience that is seared or rendered insensitive as though it has been categorized, categorized, excuse me, or branded with a hot iron. See, back in those days, they didn't have anesthesia. So they used the hot iron uh, to, to burn the, the, the injury to stop the bleeding. But back in that time, such a, a conscience is hardened and callous and, and just like the, the, the being categorized would do, you would no longer feel anything. So again, in the ancient world, doctors would use a hot iron to categorize a wound. So with no anesthesia, but if you had a wound and the, and the bleeding kept, could not be stopped, your best hope was the hot iron pressed on your flesh. But once you recover from that pain, you would discover that the bleeding has stopped. But you would also find that you had lost all the filling in that area that had been seared. See, the hot iron killed off the nerve so that you, have, that you no longer had feeling where the iron had been applied. So Paul tells us that, that this is how it is with some people's conscience. They have been seared as with a hot iron. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 19, tells us that their conscience has lost all sensitivity. And when that happens, a person can lie, a person can cheat, a person can steal, just to name a few, without their conscience raising any objection. They feel no guilt because their conscience is seared. But persons with a seared conscience no longer listen to the promptings of the conscience, and he can sin with abandon, with, and he can deceive himself into thinking that all is well with the soul. And then he can treat others with insen insensitivity and without compassion. But as Christians, we are to keep our conscience clear by obeying God and keeping our relationship with him in good standing. We do, we do this by application, application of his word, renewing and softening our hearts on a continual basis. So how do you get to keep a, how do you get and keep a good conscience? In Acts again, the 24th chapter, verse 16, they tried to accuse Paul of being a troublemaker, but Paul gives, them some, gives us some encouragement today. He says from the NLT, that because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before man and all people. So, how do you keep a good conscience? Well, a good conscience is powered by the Holy Spirit. A good conscience is set by the word of God. From Psalms, the 119th book, stands 11, it says, it says that I have hid my word in my heart, your word in my heart, that I may not sin against you. You can also get a, have a good conscience uh, where your conscience is cleansed by the blood of Christ from Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 14. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished, unblemished to God, Cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. You see, the conscience is a gift from God for your good, for your joy, and for your protection. But all of us, all of us know the misery of having our conscience accuse us and condemn us and how it makes us feel guilty. And it's not a good feeling. But what should you do when this happens? Again, your conscience is a gift. God gave it to you for your good. And when it's condemning you, 
you need to discern why and then respond. If you rightly understand how holy God is and how sinful you are, your conscience will rightly condemn you when you sin against God. Like everyone else, we all fall short of the glory of God and your conscience monitors your sins and testifies in ugly detail when, when you have sinned. Your guilty conscience, though, is a barrier. It's a barrier between you and God. And then when your conscience rightly condemns you, you should confess your sins to God and any person that you have sinned against in order to make things right. And instead of wallowing in self-pity about what, what, how wretched you are, look to Jesus. And in Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 2, it tells us that your sins are forgiven. That we should take heart. Your sins are forgiven. From Hebrews, again, ninth chapter, verse 14. How much more will the blood of Christ who through the blood of the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God purify our conscience from dead works. And we're talking about acts that lead to, lead to death so that we can serve the living God. At this time, we're going to get, go into the, uh, some scriptures about the, the conscience and we'll be right back right after this break.